morning dear friends and a warm welcome to this morning's retreat as we offer ourselves here at the foot of the cross of Jesus on this holy Saturday as we wait in preparation for Easter Vigil. Let us offer ourselves and all the intentions that we, that we have been carrying during this Holy Week retreat, the little reflections and the little prayers that we have been offering up during these seven days, let us place it here at the foot of the altar. Let Jesus and the precious blood of Jesus touch all those intentions, bring great comfort into our wounded hearts, our disturbed hearts. Let it find its comfort in the presence of the Lord. Let us all kneel as we adore our God, our King, the Lord on the cross. I say, you're the face I see, for all eternity, my God and King, my God and King, to you alone I say. We are worshipping our God and King, the King on a cross, the God of all, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one who took up the cross for us. It is He that we adore. It is He that we are in love with. It is Him that we worship. Off our hearts to Him. To be subject to Him. The King of the Cross. The God crucified. The Saviour of the world. Offer our hearts to him as we pray, my God and King. My God and King, through the storm I sing, covered by your wings. The soul of love I bring, my God and King. Through the storm I sing, covered by your King. 
the song of love I'd sing, you'd be my dream come true. Just to be with you. Just to be with you. You'll be my dream come true. You'd be my dream come true. Just to be with you, Jesus. Just to be with you. How I'd see brand new. With eyes for only you. Once again, we pray, you be my dream come true, Jesus. Just to be with you, my Lord. With eyes for only you. Yes, Lord, to have eyes only for you. That is how it was on that journey to Calvary. There were those who were so excited by everything else around. The soldiers, the scribes, the people who came to watch as spectators. But there was your mother who had eyes only for you on that day. There were the women of Jerusalem, the ones who were so deeply touched by you, they had eyes only for you. Let me have eyes only for you, Jesus, not to look around, not to get distracted, not to thirst for anything else but eyes only for my Jesus. To look at him, to see him, to celebrate him even at these moments of his pain and his struggle. On this holy Saturday, oh Jesus, a time for me to reflect. How was I there on that journey? What voice came out of me? Was it the voice of the crowd that I joined in when I cried crucify? Was it my voice that was the mocking one? There were so many voices, O oh Jesus, on that journey to Calvary. I need to ask myself today, which voice was mine? What came forth from my lips? My life reflects that, O oh Jesus. My life reflects it. Even how I spent my day yesterday reflects it. Every minute of yesterday, of Good Friday. O oh Lord, we made the stations of the cross. We prayed the passion. And yet there were other hours of the day. What was my mind indulging in? What was my desires thirsting for? That so often defines, O oh Jesus, how I stood there with a the crowd. What came forth from me? When they crucified my Lord, 
what was my reaction it is true that i made the stations it is true that i spent a few hours in prayer and yet i need to give an account for all the other hours of yesterday what did i do just as much as all those people on the journey to calvary and during the time of the crucifixion they had to give an account of what they did during that time they had to give an account of every word and every emotion that went through them during that time i also have to give an account what did i do as they crucified my lord what did i do as they placed him in the tomb what did i do what was i indulging in jesus i need to ask myself this question it is hard but i need to ask myself what did i do when they crucified my lord so many around when he was crucified when he was nailed they watched a spectacle they passed opinions and they went back home they were not touched they were indifferent they were lukewarm and they went back to their own lives it didn't matter to them they were so dead in their heart is that my story a few moments of emotions during the stations of the cross a few little tears shed at the passion And then I went back to my old story. I went back to my old life. I continued my enjoyment. I continued what I was indulging in. Nothing went deep within my heart. Everything was so superficial. Everything was so external. 
it hasn't stirred my heart it hasn't transformed me i haven't realized that my life was saved because of that moment rather i've taken it for granted and walked back to what i was doing before was i there when they crucified my lord was i there when they nailed him to the tree was i there when they placed him in the tomb were you there were you there with your heart when they crucified my lord were you really there They nailed him to that tree was i just there physically my heart was never there i was just there physically maybe i didn't say anything wrong maybe i didn't cry out crucify him but my attitude in my heart was so indifferent it didn't matter to me that they were nailing him to the cross it didn't matter to me that he was going through excruciating pain it didn't stir my heart at all it didn't it didn't touch my heart at all i was so indifferent and numb to it was that my story is that how i was there were you there when they nailed him to the tree were you they took the body down they placed it in the tomb there was joseph of arimathea there was nicodemus there was the mother of jesus and there were roman soldiers what role did i play everything finished the roman soldiers a duty was over was that my attitude placed him in the tomb duty is over we finished the passion the duty is over we did the stations of the cross duty is over finished the prayers that were needed duty is over were you there when they placed him in the tomb This is how we will be judged. How we were there at the foot of the cross. What it meant to us. How it stirred our heart. How it transformed our lives. Mother, you are the greatest model 
from start to finish the great passion with which you saw the passion of your son mother pray for me that my heart will be stirred with that same passion hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen let us be seated as we pray during these days our brothers and sisters remind us of how the lord has been touching their life their testimonies being a reminder to us that our lord is listening to our prayers bernard pinto as i was listening the other day and watching the adoration though i don't watch it live but the recording i have this hernia issue and i couldn't pass stools because it was too hard and i was very worried and i prayed during the adoration after some time i was able to pass without any pain or bleeding i've also had ingrown toenails and i'm diabetic and it was very painful and i didn't want to go to the doctor worried that they would get it pulled out and during the adoration i asked the lord to touch for i was terribly scared of the operation or hospitalization when i got up in the morning the pain had gone off very mild pain remained it is the lord's mercy and grace without which it wouldn't have been possible and i praise and thank jesus for this praise the lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Karen testifies, I would like to testify to God's multiple graces and blessings. I have received from time to time, I started participating in the DRCC online retreats. It has become a staple for me and I feel out of sorts when I do not participate in it. My life has not been a bed of roses. The challenges are non-stop. In fact the more I spend time with the Lord the more obstacles I seem to face and whilst I do get tripped up every now and then I know the Lord and the blessed mother is looking out for me and taking care of things I just need to stop worrying notwithstanding that the Lord always carries me through my problems and always helps me to see it through Sometimes I'm amazed at how easily my problems are resolved. Life's a bit of a roller coaster these days, but the Lord gives me great energy to be able to take it one day at a time, and I praise the Lord for giving me this strength during these retreats to be able to face whatever I have to face. I thank and praise Jesus for this. Krishan Fernandez from Dubai I have been continuously bleeding since a couple of months although it's not heavy bleeding but this bleeding makes me frustrated drained out and irritable as I'm unable to find a solution to stop this and I get extremely tired when I do my work every doctor I go to gives me different reasons sometimes I feel like screaming and crying but i surrendered my tears to the lord some days ago during the adoration father asked us to place our hands on the areas that need healing and i immediately placed one hand on the blessed sacrament and the other on my stomach and i cried to the lord for mercy father announced at that moment that someone with hemorrhage is getting healed and i immediately claimed it for myself It is now the 5th day since that announcement was made there has been no bleeding after that i feel totally relieved and energetic 
and I'm able to do my work with much ease. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, even as our friends testify about how the Lord touches them physically or the Lord gives them great strength to be able to face what they are facing, let it be a reminder to us that we too are given this strength. We too are given this touch of Jesus and the Lord will always be with us. Please do send in your testimonies at testimonies.drcc at gmail.com. Do it for the glory of God. We have been going through the last seven sayings of Jesus on the cross. Today is the final one. We, we pray over what Jesus' final words were in the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke chapter 23, verse 44 onwards. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn into two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In the Gospel of John, this is said after he says, it is finished. And they don't say the words, but Jesus offered his spirit. Here in the Gospel of Luke, it says, Jesus says in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The very final words of Jesus on the cross, just before his death. Final words are very important. What are the last words? Very often last words are engraved on the tombstones as well. So final words are very, very important, especially those words that are coming out at the darkest, deepest moments of a person's life. Death is the darkest and the deepest moment of a human person's life. During that most painful moment, what words came out? I remember when we were in the seminary, two incidents that took place at two, um, two very different um, um, different times. One was when we were in the philosophate and um, one, of our, one of our brothers, we were playing basketball and he fell and broke his hand. Injuries when we were in the seminary was a very, very common thing. And he broke his hand. He was in terrible pain. And all of us were around him. Uh, the priests were around him as well. And we took him to the hospital. But afterwards, there was discussion more about the abuses that were coming out from the mouth during that time, or more than the abuses, maybe the frustration that was coming out, the pain that was coming out from in words from his mouth. So certain words that were uttered, and we pulled his leg about, about those words that were uttered when he was in that moment of great pain. Fast forward to a few years later, during our theology, theology, I wasn't studying in that particular theology, but it was our Vincentian our study house. And one of our brothers fell once again during the basketball game, and he broke his hand as well. And during that time, in the midst of his great pain, all that he kept saying was the name of Jesus, and he cried it out loud. I wasn't present over there, but when we came for our holidays, we were in the study house for a couple of days, and some of the brothers were mentioning about that in great awe. They said in that time of great pain, all that he could say was the name of Jesus. In the moment of great pain, in those deepest, darkest moments, what you say remains. It's not forgotten easily. It remains. And therefore, like we said, last words become so significant. Jesus chooses 
his final words so significantly. Because it is not only words, but it is also an act. When Jesus says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For one, he's saying this loudly, and there's a reason. Remember, we spoke about what Jesus said on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He says that loudly as well. He says that loudly because it is a reference to Psalm 22. And they are supposed to be taken back to Psalm 22 to remind themselves that Jesus is actually speaking about the fulfillment of the prophecy. Here too, in the last words of Jesus, it is the same. It is Psalm 31 verse 5. Psalm 31 verse 5. But I'll, I'll get to, some, um, to the verse 5 as we read from verse 1 onwards. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. Into your hand I commit my spirit. The whole psalm is actually a beautiful psalm of trust and surrender. A beautiful psalm of trust and surrender. Jesus at this moment, the final words, he's commending his spirit. Spirit in Greek, in this particular usage over here, in Greek it is pneuma and in Hebrew it is ruha. He's commending his spirit where? Into the hands of the Father. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. What is going to happen after this? There is no surety about. This is death. It's the final moments. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Jesus knows he's going to be raised after three days. He mentions about this multiple times in the Gospels. But at that moment of death, when, there is, when you do not see what is there ahead, I remember when I did my surgery on my knee in Sydney, um, they took me inside. They had to give me general anesthesia. So um, as they're giving me general anesthesia, the doctor had already told me, I have to tell you this, but those who are given general anesthesia, there is a possibility that you will not get up or wake up from it anymore. And then you have to sign and say it is okay. When you sign, you're basically signing and telling them, now it is in your hands. Everything is in your hands. Because we will lie limp over there. We will not have consciousness. I might never come out from that unconscious state. When Jesus is going to die, his last moments, what does he do? He surrenders into the presence of the Father. Remember the Lord says in, in the Gospels, Jesus says in the Gospel of John, in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 5, So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. O oh, Father, glorify me. Till that time, all throughout these days as well, we have been praying and meditating on this. Jesus was doing everything that was the Father's will. Everything was Father's will. He was glorifying the Father's will. 
In John chapter 17, Jesus says, in John 17, 5, he says, Remember, O Father, glorify me. Glorify me. Now he's offering his spirit into the hands, surrendering his spirit into the hands of the Father, knowing that the Father will glorify him. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. I surrender. In my deepest, in my darkest moments, I'm surrendering my spirit into the hands of the Father. What trust. And that is why Psalm 31 is the connection. Psalm 31 is completely a psalm of trust. Surrendering. And then the words in verse 5 of Psalm 31 into your hands I commend, I commit my spirit. So that is exactly what Jesus is doing here. During the darkest, deepest moment, he's surrendering to the Father. And that is what we are called to do as well. During our darkest, deepest moments, can we do what Jesus has taught us to do? To surrender ourselves into the presence of the Father and trust in Him. You know, Jesus could have so easily thought, He wouldn't have, obviously, but He could have so easily thought, this deepest, darkest moment is because it was the will of the Father. Then how do I trust Him to glorify me? He wouldn't obviously ask that. But sometimes we can ask that. I'm in my deepest, darkest moments. Why didn't God do anything? I did everything the Lord wanted me to do. I prayed the way the Lord wanted me to pray. I lived the way the Lord wanted me to live. I didn't commit sin. I walked on the right path. I offered the sacrifices that is required of me. I carried the crosses that was need, required of me. Then why am I in this deep, dark space? And during that time, can we surrender to the Lord and say, Into your hands, O Father, I commend my life. Even in the midst of my darkest moment, instead of blaming the Father, instead of finding it difficult to trust the Father, will I be able to say at that most painful, darkest moment of my life, instead of complaining and saying, I am in this space because God did nothing. After being so faithful, the Lord did nothing. Instead of saying that, will I be able to utter the words of Jesus? Father, into your hands, I commend my life. I trust in you. I will continue to trust in you. That should be our prayer. Today Jesus has taught us in that last final word and sentence, Jesus has taught us how to live our life by surrendering in our deepest, darkest moments into the presence of the Father who loves us who cares for us, and he who will glorify us. Let us all kneel. The last moments of his life on earth. Remember, after this comes the resurrection but at that time, everything is different. Now, in his perfectly human body, with all his human emotions, the last moment of his life, with that pain, the humiliation, the scourging, the nails, the crown of thorns, the deepest, darkest moment and his words, 
Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He trusts the Father, surrenders his whole life, his ruha, his numa, he surrenders it to the Father. He knows the Father's love for him. As the Father had acknowledged it multiple times, this is my beloved Son. In my darkest moment, in the deepest and most decisive moment of my life, Am I ready to surrender my life and commend it into the hands of the Father who loves me? Will I trust Him enough or will I blame Him for this dark moment of my life? Will I complain that He is not responding to my prayers or will I offer and say, the love of my Father is so deep. Here, O oh Father, I commend my life to you. How deep your love for me. How deep the Father's love for us. Beyond all measure That he should give his only son To make a wretch his treasure How great the pain of searing love Father chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders the shame I hear my mocking voice call out among the What a story. Not his, but mine. My story is on the cross. He taught, taught till the very end. His last words were one of his greatest teachings. Surrender your life into the hands of your loving Father. See what your Father and me and the Spirit have done for you. You have life because of what has happened on the cross. This is your story. Learn to trust the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
This is what Jesus would want of us. In our deepest moments, our darkest moments, our most painful moments, our greatest triumphant moments, to surrender our whole life to the Lord and celebrate. Celebrate that my life is in the hands of my Father whom I trust. I will not have to be afraid. I thank you, O oh Father, for as Jesus' prayer was, my prayer will be, glorify me, Father, in the midst of all my pains, sorrows, my struggles and my brokenness and according to the world, my defeats. You glorify me in your time. When you feel it is right. Till then, confidently I surrender my life into your hands. I will trust in you. Until then, I will wait. I will wait, Lord Jesus, for the triumphant moment, the moment of glory. Time and again in the scriptures, you reminded us, wait. Wait on the Lord. At times, Lord, this has been my greatest weakness. I've not been able to wait on you. I've not been able to wait for you to act. I've always wanted things so quickly, immediate answers. I wanted everything to be perfect all the time. But I failed to embrace the verses of the scriptures that come so many times. Wait on the Lord. Today, Holy Saturday, is a day when many waited. The apostles waited. Mary Magdalene waited. The Blessed Mother waited. This was a day when they would make a choice. Either they would go with a crowd who would say he called himself the Messiah. He called himself the Christ. But there he died on the cross. Everything's over. Or they will hold on and wait on the Lord. They didn't know what they were waiting for. Holy Saturday is a day when they would have waited not knowing what the future lies. Just as we wait not knowing what the future lies ahead. But we know the prayer that Jesus made. Glorify me, Father. When we wait, O Lord, you glorify us. In your time, in your way. But we will wait. I must wait, wait, wait on the Lord. I must wait, wait. timing he will tell what to do where to go what to say times, oh Jesus, this can be my most difficult thing to do, to wait, 
and to know and trust that what you do will be good for me the way you glorify will be best for me give me patience just as you trusted in your father and you commended your spirit into his hands i commend my life into your hands oh holy trinity and i must wait wait on you lord i must wait 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 on the lord i must wait Can you commend your family you love into the hands of the Lord? Commend all that your family is going through into the hands of the Lord. Can you trust him holding your family? Maybe your family is in a very deep dark space. Don't know how to get out of it. Frustrated. You'll have done everything that the Lord would have asked you all to do. Prayed, offered sacrifices, forgave, did everything. Went to church regularly, made your confessions. You've done everything and still you're in a deep, deep dark space. And you've run out of ideas, you've run out of hope and you think to yourself, now what? Can you pray the prayer Jesus prayed? Into your hands, O oh Father, I commend my family. And I will wait to glorify for you to glorify my family. So as a family we pray, we must wait. We must wait on the Lord. We must wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord, we must wait, wait, wait on the Lord, learn our lesson well, it is time and He will tell what to do, where to go, what to say. Maybe you cannot see anything bright in front of your family the pathway your family is going through you don't see the light anywhere around and you're terrified of what lies ahead and yet trusting in the lord trusting in the father trusting in the spirit to be around we must wait wait on you lord we must wait We must wait, wait, wait on the Lord. Learn our lesson well. In His timing, He will tell what to do, where to go, what to say. Let that be our confidence. He will tell us what to do, where to go. and what to say this dark deep space carrying my cross mercy it was they who gave me strength to endure my bitter passion through them as through channels my mercy flows out upon mankind 
All through these days, we have been praying for priests. We have been fasting for priests. Today, perfectly, the last day of the fast, perfectly, the novena asks us to pray for all priests. Most merciful Jesus, from whom comes all that is good, increase your grace in us that we may perform worthy works of mercy, that all who see them may glorify the Father of mercy who is in heaven. The fountain of God's love dwells in pure hearts, bathed in the sea of mercy, radiant as stars, bright as the dawn. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon the company of your chosen ones in your vineyard, upon the souls of priests and religious, and endow with them with the strength of your blessing. For the love of the heart of your Son in which they are enfolded, impart to them your power and light, that they may be able to guide others in the way of salvation and with one voice sing praise to your boundless mercy for ages without end. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. We pray the prayer for priests by St. Therese of Calcutta. Mary, Mother of Jesus, throw your mantle of purity over our priests. Protect them, guide them, and keep them in your heart. Be a mother to them, especially in times of discouragement and loneliness. Love them and keep them belonging to Jesus. Like Jesus, they too are your sons, so keep their hearts pure and chaste. Keep their minds filled with Jesus and put Jesus always on their lips so that he is the one they offer to sinner and to all they meet. Mary, mother of Jesus, be their mother, loving them and bringing them joy. Take special care of sick and dying priests and the ones most tempted. Remember how they spend their youth and old age their entire lives serving and giving all to Jesus. Mary, bless them and keep a special place for them in your heart. Give them a piece of your heart so wonderful, so beautiful and pure and immaculate, so full of love and humility, so that they too can grow in the likeness of Christ. Dear Mary, make them humble like you and holy like Jesus. Amen. Let us prepare to receive the blessing of the cross down in adoration. Down in adoration falling Low the sacred host we hail Low forms deep
Mother, pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, so for 30 days we have been fasting and praying for priests. Thank you so much for all the prayers. Uh, Father Joby and myself, thank you, as many of you would have offered us as well, as you would have offered all the many priests. So on behalf of all the priests, you have offered your fast. Thank you very much. We, we had nearly over uh, around 20,000, close to 20,000 fasts that were offered for priests. So we thank you from the bottom of our heart for all the prayers and the fasting that you have offered for all priests. Continue to pray for your priests in a special way. Um, tomorrow in the morning, we'll have the adoration. From the first, we will be having the Divine Mercy uh, retreat. All the reflections on the Divine Mercy and praying for the Lord's mercy to flow into our families, especially during this mon one month. The feast is on the 7th, but the whole month we will be praying for the Lord's divine mercy to flow into our families and into our hearts. So please do join us from the first. Tomorrow morning we'll have the adoration and the online mass. Um, that we will be celebrating for Easter. We will offer it up, offer our families, and we will pray. God bless you all. Have a blessed Easter vigil, and we will see you tomorrow.